Chapter 9, Football. When the bell rings, the school hallways get crazy. It's like a big river of kids rushing around, but like the dangerous rapid kind in the movies. There's only four minutes between class. You leave one class, grab your books from your locker, and head to the next class. Four minutes isn't long. It's barely enough time for me to figure out my locker combo. Birmingham Middle has 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, so everyone's bigger than me. I've always been kind of short and scrawny for my age. Since my birthday's in August, I'm also younger than most kids in my class. It sucks, because I walk out and it's like BAM. I get hit by these 8th grade giants who aren't watching where they're going. And then WHAM! I get slammed by someone else's backpack. Then SMASH! I crash right into a locker. It's like a pinball machine, and I'm the little silver ball that everyone is whacking and slapping around. By lunchtime, I feel like a dead punching bag. But today, I finally have some luck. Liam, Todd, Zach, and I are finally able to sit together. Liam's friend Derek is there too, though. I'm pretty sure he hates me. I don't know why. He always disagrees with me and looks at me like I'm hiding something. Three guys I don't know take the other seats. It's only the third week of school, but I can already tell you I hate Mrs. Constance. Who needs science anyway, Zach says. She's the worst, Todd agrees. Totally, Liam adds. All of you are in the same class, I ask. Yeah, we have a few classes together, Todd says. Why aren't you in any with us? Because God hates me, I want to say. Instead, I shrug. I don't know. In the remedial classes with the retards, Zach laughs. No, I start to reach into my backpack to prove it with my schedule. Zach adds, or are you in one of those homos in all honors classes? Todd and Liam laugh. I leave my schedule in my backpack. I'm in three honors classes, but I don't want anyone to think I'm a homo. Who's trying out for football? Derek asks. Liam, Todd, and Zach raise their hands. Then I do too, saying, awesome. We all high five. You're trying out? Derek asks me. Why wouldn't I? You're too small. You'll get crushed. I feel anger rising in my throat. Derek's always looking for a way to put me down. But Liam says, what are you talking about? He could be a safety or a punt returner or a running back. Being smaller works for those positions. See, I say, even though I don't, don't know what those positions are, I've never played football. I don't even watch it because our TV sucks. It barely gets two channels, but if I can teach myself all the stuff I've already taught myself, I can learn football easy. I've seen you in gym class, Derek says. You'll get, you'll still get crushed. Liam laughs. You realize you're like half an inch shorter than Ogle, right? No, I'm not. Derek turns red in the face. Todd and Zach start cracking up. I do too. Seeing Derek all angry makes me really happy. He's such a jerk. I decide I'm going to join the football team just to piss him off. It takes me almost a week to get up the courage to ask Mom and Sam. If I want to be on the football team, I need a parent's signature. I'm going to ask tonight. Sam says cooking is women's work, but Mom doesn't know how to cook, so in our house, I make the meals. Today was double coupon day, so we actually have food in the house. I make hamburger helper for dinner. I set the table with paper plates, folded paper towels, plastic cups, and metal utensils. Mom helps Ford into his booster seat while I spoon the steaming meal and pasta onto the plates. Moisture forms all around the edges of the plate where the meat hits the surface. I add a lot of salt and pepper. Sam points at me and says, pull my finger. No, I say, just do it. When I pull his finger, he farts. Ford laughs so hard he almost chokes on his food, and Mom gets mad. As I chew, I'm nervous to ask about football. I don't know why. Guess because almost every time I ask for something, they say no. Then Mom brings it up for weeks and weeks after, saying how selfish I am. I take a deep breath, but keep eating. I wait until Mom stops grilling Sam about finding work. Then I pull the football waiver from my po pocket and slide it into the center of the table. I want to join the football team. Football, Ford says. He throws a handful of pasta. It hits me in the face. Th that's my b -b boy, Sam stutters. Good, good throw. 
Absolutely not, Mom says. You'll get hurt. It can't be that dangerous. All my friends are doing it. If all your friends jumped off a cliff, would you do that too? Mom always asks stupid things like that. I say, if it was a fun cliff, the answer is a big fat no. Mom and I expect the conversation to be over, but it wasn't. Now, hold on, Lucinda, Sam says. If Rex is serious, I support him. But better than reading books all the time, he'd get some muscles and maybe a girlfriend and stop being such a sissy all the time. Despite the dig, this surprises me. Sam never stands up for me. It takes me a full minute to finally register he's on my side. Yeah, what he said. No, Mom fires back. I am not signing any waivers. Rex could break his neck over some pointless game. It's n -n not pointless, Sam says. It'll help the b boy make friends. I said no, she shouts, slapping her hands on the table. Why not? I shout back. You never let me do anything. Let me have this one thing, please. My black eye is finally gone, but I prepare myself for a fresh one when I see Mom's glare. J -j -j just let him try out, Sam says. Please, Mom, I'll do whatever you want. I'll make good grades, clean the house, and... I said no, she hisses. Who cares about sports anyway? I d -d do, Sam says. Oh, you mean back when you were a wrestler? And how did that work out? I don't see you making any money off it now. Watch your mouth, woman. Or what? Don't threaten me. Mom screams, fine, let him play. Who's going to pay for it, huh? Who's paying for the helmets and the pads and the uniforms, huh? Who's going to drive him to games? Who's going to watch Ford when we have to work and Rex is playing football, a babysitter? And who will pay for that? And what if Rex get hurts, gets hurt, huh? Huh? We don't have jobs, let alone insurance. Who's going to pay for the hospital bills when he breaks his neck and I'm left whooping his butt? You won't have any, you won't have to wipe my butt, I say, trying to calm the situation, but it's too late. Sam and Mom are heated. So who's going to pay for all of it, she screams, and answer me that. I'll p -p pay for it, Sam says. I'm not sure who's more shocked, Mom or me. Then Mom's stare turns ice cold. Her mouth twists into a cruel smile. How are you going to pay for it, huh? You're a loser and a deadbeat and a has-been. You don't have any money. You don't have, you don't even have a job. Sam throws the whole table to the side. I barely dodge out of the way in time. Paper plates and silverware fly through the air. Hamburger helper splatters the white walls. I've never seen the table on its side before. It feels all wrong, like gravity has reversed or I'm in a dream. Everything happens so fast after that. Sam is in Mom's face, screaming, his stutter gone. Mom doesn't back down, though. She's unafraid, thrives on this. Now she gets in his face, pointing, poking his face, his chest. Mom is screaming so hard, spit comes out. About his ice-cold mother, about his alcoholic father, about what a loser he is, how she needs to go out and find a real man, one that can pay the bills. My mom knows exactly what to say to hurt someone. When I see Ford, tears streaming down his face, his crying lost in the storm of Sam and Mom's screams, I snap back to myself. This isn't a dream. I pick up my brother and carry him into the room. I close the door just in time so we don't have to see what comes next. Even behind the thin plastic door, we can still hear it, feel it. Hear the brawl, the screams, turning into thuds and gasps for air. Feel the floor vibrations of wrestling and kicking, someone trying to hold their ground and failing. Feel two bodies crash to the floor and hear a woman's voice wail in pain. And even though it's so quiet, even 20 feet away, I know the sound of air moving aside as a fist comes down again and again. I turn on the radio to block the noise. I build a pillow fort for Ford, 
I don't have big fancy pillows or plush couch cushions, just the one old pillow I sleep with. But I have cardboard boxes from our last move. I have thumbtacks to pin my sheets to the walls, creating new walls and alleys and roofs, so we're hidden away in a labyrinth. I pretend out loud that I've built him a majestic castle, describing every brick and barrier and weapon that will protect him from the monsters outside. Inside, the blankets and constructed walls, hidden deep inside my sleeping bag, I turn on a flashlight and hold Ford close. I tell him made-up stories of worlds far away from here until he finally falls asleep. When I try to go to sleep, I still hear the battle outside the castle walls. I try not to move, not to cry, so I don't wake up my brother. I'm not upset for me. I'm upset for Ford and for my mom. Usually the fights aren't my fault. This time it is. In the morning, furniture is overturned. A chair is missing a leg and a lamp is broken. Last night's dinner is still splashing everywhere, but it's all dried and crusted. A huge crater now lives in the wall, like an abstract painting. The crater is the same size as my mom's body, and my football waiver is torn into a hundred pieces scattered all over the living room like confetti. When mom comes out to make her coffee, she doesn't say a single word. She glares at me the way Derek glares at me, like I'm filth, dirty and disgusting, like I'm wrong and pathetic, like I'm in the way, unwelcome, the way someone looks at dog poop on the bottom of their shoe. I want to hate my mom for hating me. I want to scream. Tell her I'm joining football whether she likes it or not. I want to tell her to grow up and act like an adult and get a job and stop making my life so hard. I want to say all those things and more, but I don't. Instead, I try to hug her. She shoves me away, then glares at me through a red swollen cheek and her own puffy black eye. With a busted lip, she asks, are you happy now?